Okay, welcome everybody. So we're starting the Gemara today towards the bottom of Chavav Amit Beis, where it says, Ularave the Omar. So the Gemara today is a continuation of what we learned yesterday. The Gemara yesterday we learned brought two statements, one from Rab Shemim ben Elazar and one from Rabbi Yishmael. And Rav says that even though they seem to be saying something similar, but it's not exactly the same. What did Rab Shemim ben Elazar say? Rab Shemim ben Elazar said, when it comes to a garment that's made from tzemer or pishton, which means wool or linen, then even if it's a small piece of garment, which is three by its boys by three its boys, it could become tame. That doesn't apply to anything that's not tzemer or pishton. Rabbi Shmuel also learns out from what it says by Negoim, Tzemer and Pishtim, and therefore only Tzemer and Pishtim become Tame, but not other garments. So Rave, what we learned yesterday is, Rave said that there's a difference between Rabbi Shemim ben Elazar and Rabbi Shmuel. According to Rabbi Shmuel, there is no Tume for any other garments whatsoever. The whole din of Tume is only Menegeh to Tzemer and Pishtim. On the other hand, according to Rabbi Shem ben Elazar, since he specifically says that by other garments, if it's three by three at boys, the, tr- the Tumah doesn't apply. So from that, you could understand that according to Rabbi Shem ben Elazar, by other garments, if they are three Tfachim by three Tfachim, then the Tumah would apply. So that's the difference between Rabbi Shem ben Elazar and Rabbi Shmal according to Rabbi. So the Gemara will now discuss this, and the Gemara will bring the source for this. Let's turn inside. We're four lines from the bottom of Chavav on the base. According to Rav, that says, When you have a piece of garment, that's three by three tfachim. This is the difference between Rav Shemim ben Elazar and Rabbi Shmuel. But Rav Shemim ben Elazar is slayed. Rav Shemim ben Elazar says that in this case, since it's three by three tfachim, the Tumah does apply to other garments. The Tanah debate Rabbi Shmuel less slay. But Rabbi Shmuel holds no Tumah applies to any other garment, even if it's three by three uh, uh, tfachim. So, if so, the question now of the Gemara is, Shloisha al Shloisha b'shar b'gadam inole. According to Rav, following Rav Shem ben Elazar's opinion, from where do we know that by other garments not made out of tzemer or pishtim, wool or linen, that there's a tumah when it's three by three tfachim? If the Torah says tzemer and pishtim, so what's the source that by other begadim made out of other uh, uh, materials, if it's three by three tfachim, it could become tummy. And for the Gemara nafke, it's learned out mi oy beged. By the tomb of Shratzim, the Torah writes, Oi Beged. The word Oi is extra. <clears throat> and that word teaches to include other materials, not from Tzemer and Pishtim, if it's three by three Tfachim. The Tanya, it says in Abraise, that's the gear that we have here in the Gemara. However, Rashi says, not to include the word the Tanya, because if this is a clear Braise, and this is explaining Rav's opinion, a Baye that argued before wouldn't have argued. So therefore Rashi says to take out the word the Tanya. Taisus discusses it, okay, but that Rashi takes it out. Beged, the Torah writes that the Tome is by a Beged. Ainly Ella Beged, I only know that it's a Beged, which is, as we explained before, all begotten in the Torah refers to Tzemer and Pishtim, wool and linen. Shloisha al Shloisha Bishar Begadim Inayin. How about if you have other begotten that are not Tzemer and Pishtim, if it's three by three Tfachim, how do I know that they are included, that they could become Tomei, Tamad Loimar, Oi Beged? It's learned out from what it says by Shratzim Oi. Beged. So this is the limud of Rave according to Rab Shemib ben Elazar. There is a distinction between Semer and Pishtim and all other begadim. By Semer and Pishtim, even if it's just three ed's boys, by three ed's boys it becomes Tame. But from Oi Beged that it says by Shratzim, we learn out that even other materials could also become Tame if it's three by three Tfachim. Va'abaye. Now Abaye that disagreed with all of this, Abaye says both according to Rab Shemib ben Elazar and according to Rabbi Shmal, there's no difference. Everybody holds that there is no Tumah at all by any other materials besides Semer and Pishtim, even if it's three by three Tfachim. So what does he do with this extra Oi Beged that it says by Shratzim? Hi, Oi Beged, my Ovid lay. What does he do with this extra Pasuk of Oi Beged? Mi Boye lay. What he uses it for is for something else. 
Le rabbis shalish al shalish b'tzemer upishtim the metame b'shratzim. He uses it to teach me that garments made out of wool or linen. Regarding shratzim, it will become tame if it's three by three. It's boys. Now the Gemara before brought a pasuk to teach me that semer and pishtim will become tame if it's three and three. It's boys regarding the goyim, regarding a taras. But according to Abaye, oy beged, we need a separate pasuk to teach me the same halacha benigay to shratzim. That semer and pishtim, that are three and three. It's boys will become tame by shratzim. The Gemara will discuss this, but according to Abaye, we need a separate pasuk. Vidrave and Rava responds to this. The Torah clarifies by Nagayim that semer and pishtim, that are three by three. It's boys become tame. And we learn out that the same din applies regarding shratzim. We don't need an extra pasuk of Oy Beged to teach me that. So therefore, Oy Beged could be used to teach me, according to Rava, that even other garments that are not made out of Tzemer and Pishtim will become Tomei when it's three by three Tvachim. Ve'er Abaye. Now, according to Abaye, why do you need a separate pasuk regarding Shratzim? Ekele Mifrach, because we can't learn it out from the Goyim. Why? Because the following question could be asked. Mal in a Goyim, you know why, why in a Goyim there is this Chumre, that it becomes Tomei when it's three by three heads boys. Sheken Shasi ve'erev metame behem. By in a Goyim, you specifically find that the Torah says that even when you only have a Shasi and a Erev, which are the two threads that are used to make the Beged, and over there, there's a nega that itself makes it tummy. And that's a chumrah that you find only by Nagayim and not by Shratzim. So you can't learn out when it says by Nagayim that three by three it's boys make it Tomei, that the same should apply by Nagayim to Shratzim. So therefore, Abai says you do need a separate Pasik. Ve Edoch, and Rava responds to this. Chayre, this is considered to be a chumra by Nagayim. Isolke daitoch, Nagayim chamiri, if you are right that by Nagayim it is more chumra than shratzim because of this reason that you just mentioned, because the Tuma applies even to a shasi and erev, so then lichtoiv rachman agabi shratzim. Let the Taita write this chiddish, this chumra, that three by three its boys becomes tame, let it say it by shratzim, which is more lenient. Vileis in Nagayim inayo. And then Nagayim, which is more chumra, as you're claiming, I would learn out from Shratzim. Why would the Taita have to write twice, Rava says? Why does the Taita have to write once by Nagayim and another time Oy Beged by Shratzim to learn out in both cases that Semer and Pishtim, when it's three by three, it's boys, becomes Tomei. If you're telling me Nagayim is Mohamor, so then write it once by Shratzim. And then from Shratzim, I could learn it out to Nagayim. So from this, Rav says it must be that this Chumra of Shasi Ve'erev by Nagayim is not considered to be a Chumra. It's not counted as a Chumra. Now the Gemara asks back, Ve'idach, and according to Abaye, Nagayim Mishratzim Loi Asu. You can't learn out Nagayim from Shratzim. This is not an option. That the Torah should write it just by Shratzim, which is more lenient, and then I would know that for sure the same applies to Nagayim, which is more stringent. Why not? The Kilamifrach, because there's a Pircha, there is a certain Chumra that Shratzim has that Nagayim doesn't. Well, you just mentioned Nagayim has a Chumra, but Shratzim also has a Chumra. Mala Shratzim, Shekemitame. When it comes to Shratzim, a Sharetz, even just the size of an Adasha, lentil, makes something tummy. And Rashi here brings that's not an Banigayim, the size needed, the minimum size needed is a Giris, which is a barley, which is a bean, that is, some kind of a bean, which is about nine size, nine times the size of a lentil. So therefore, we can't say that Nagayim is more Chomer than Shratzim. Yeah, Nagayim does have a Chomer over Shratzim, but at the same time, Shratzim has a Chomer over Nagayim. So therefore, the Taita had to write it in both cases according to Abaya, to teach me that in both cases, a piece of garment that's three by three, it's boy, of Tzemer and Pishtim becomes Tomei. Now the Gemara does not carry on to explain B'nigayet to how Rava responds to this Chumre here, but Taisu says that ultimately Rava's opinion is that the Taita has to write it just once by Nagayim, that three by three it's boys by Tzemer and Pishtim becomes Tomei. Once it writes it there, it doesn't have to write it again. Even though the Chayre is a Chumre, we could ask a question on it, but Taisu says that this is just a Gili Milsa. The concept of a Gili Milsa is the Taita is just clarifying a fact. 
what falls into the category of a beged that becomes tummy. And by the Torah clarifying, by Nagayim, that even a small garment that's three by three, it's boys, falls into that category. So now once we know that fact, that fact remains true anywhere and there's no pirchas on this. It's just clarifying a fact that it is a beged. And therefore the Rav held, it's enough for the Torah to write this once by Nagayim. Now the Gemara goes back to the Tana de Bey Rabbi Shmol. Omar Abayim, hi, Tana de Bey Rabbi Shmol, what we just learned here in the name of Rabbi Shmol. The Rabbi Shmol holds that the Tuma that applies to garments only applies to Tzemer and Pishtim, to wool and linen, not any other garments. Mapik mi'idur Tana de Bey Rabbi Shmol. It seems to be excluding or saying the opposite of a different ton of the Beit Abishmol, where he clearly said that the Tumah does apply to other garments. The ton of the Beit Abishmol, we learned in a second place about what, Rabbi, what was said in the Yeshiva of Rabbi Shmol. Beged, so the Titus says, Beged, only Ella Beged Semer of Pishtim. So we know that Beged only means Semer and Pishtim because that's what it says by Nagayim that it's only Semer and Pishtim. But then he says, Menayin la Rabbi Semer Gemalim with Semer Arnovim. How do I know to include even other kinds of garments from the hair that comes from camels or from rabbits hair, Naitza Shal Izim, or the hair that's plucked out of a goat? Vahashirin, Vahakaloch, Vahasrikin. We had this before in the Gemara. These are three different grades of silk. So, how do we know that the Tuma applies even to all of these cases which are not Tzemer and Pishtim? Tamad Laimar, Oi Beget. We learn out from Oi Beget that it says by Shratzim to be Marba that all of these are also included in the Tuma of Begadim. So, this is clearly not like the first Hanad Beit Abishma where it says that it's only the Tuma only applies to Tzemer and Pishtim. And Rav clearly spelled that out before. Abayo, both Rav and Abayo agreed regarding what Rabbi Shmuel said before. So what's the pshat here? How do we <laughs> reconcile this contradiction? So the Gemara is going to bring three answers. First, the Gemara says, Rav Omar, Rav answered this, this contradiction here. Ki lest leilahach tana de Rabbi Shmuel bishar begodim. When does, does the first tana de Rabbi Shmuel say? That there's no Tumah by other Begodim besides Tzemer and Pishtim, Shalish al Shalish. If it's only three fingers by three finger breaths, three its boys by three its boys, then the Tumah doesn't apply. But if it's larger, if it's Shlaisha al Shlaisha, if it's three Tvachim by three Tvachim, then Isle. Then Rabbi Shmuel will agree. And that's what it says in the second ton of the Rabbi Shmuel, that three by three Tvachim, it does apply. The Gemara immediately asks, but Vaharav Hu Da'ama, we learned yesterday, Rav is the one that says, and we just read it before as well, Shloisha al Shloisha Bishar Begodim, when it comes to three by three Tvachim by other garments besides Tzemer and Pishtim, let Abshim ben Alazar Islay, only Rabshim ben Alazar is the one that holds that the Tuma applies, but Latana ben Abishmal Leslay. Rabbi Shmuel holds that there is no Tumah by other garments, even if it's three by three Tvachim. So how could Rav himself answer the contradiction of the two Rabbi Shmuels in this way? So the Gemara says, Hodabei Rav Mahahi. Rav retracts of what he said before. This that Rav said before, that according to Rabbi Shmuel, there is no Tumah by other garments that are not Semer and Pishtim, even if they're three by three Tvachim, Rav retracted that. Rav holds now that Rabbi Shmuel has to agree to Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar that there is Tumah by other garments if it's three by three Tvachim. That's the only way we can answer the stira of the two Rabbi Shmuels according to Rav. Now the Gemara brings another pshat, Vibay Seime, or there's another pshat that was given here, Ha Rav Papa Amra. Not Rava answered this, this we just quoted from Rava that's not true, rather it was Rav Papa that gave the answer to the stira of the two Rabbi Shmals. Now Taisus points out, the Taisus is an Ahmed base, even though it's on this Gemara, but Taisus points out that Rav Papa was the student of Rava, and therefore sometimes Rav Papa would say things and it would not be clear if he's saying it in the name of his teacher Rava, or he was saying a member of his own. So therefore that's what happened over here. Rava, it, some thought that Rava gave the answer, but really it wasn't Rava. It was Rav Papa that was giving the answer on his own. Now what did Rav Papa say? Rav Papa said a completely different answer. Rav Papa Omar, Rav Papa says, Af kol. When it says in the first Tana de Beit Rabbi Shmuel, that whenever the Torah says Beged, it means only Tzemer and Pishtim. And nothing other than Tzemer and Pishtim 
could become Tomei, not right? And now we have the second ton of the Rabbi Shemal that says that other begadim could become Tomei. So what did it mean when it said the first time Afkol that always the begadim mean just Semer and Pishtim? It's, talk, it's not talking about Tomei at all. It's talking about something completely different. La Suye Klayim. What that is talking about is is regarding Klayim, which is Shatnez. That the din of Shatnez is only with Semer and Pishtim, with wool and flax, with wool and linen. Frek, that's all. So that's the answer. The first ton of the Rabbi Shemal was talking about the din of Shatnes, and the second ton of the Rabbi Shemal is talking about uh, Tumah. And regarding Tumah, Rabbi Shemal is saying that we learn out from Oy Beged that the Tumah is not only by Tzemer and Pishtim, it applies even by other garments. And Rashi adds to this, that according to this, it's not even necessary to say what Rav has said before, that by other garments it's only going to be by three and three tfachim and not less. Not necessarily. Now we're saying that Rabbi Shmuel, when he said that a beged means only tzemer and pishtim, that's talking about shatnas. When it comes to tuma, however, he learns out from Oy beged that all tum, uh, that all begadim are included included in the tuma, even if it's less than three by three tfachim. Frek, the Gemara on this answer, wait a minute. Kalayim, we need a special limut to say from the Goyim that Begodim, that uh, says means only Tzemer and Pishtim, and therefore that's what Shatnis is. Kalayim ba'ad yiksivi be. Regarding Kalayim, it says clearly in the Torah, Le silbash Shatnis, Tzemer Pishtim yachtov. Do not wear a garment of Shatnis, and the Torah says, what is Shatnis? Tzemer and Pishtim. No other garment of any other material is, is Shatnis. And for the Gemara, no, we could still answer. Salka daita chamina. I may have thought to say han emili derech levisha. When it says here that the shatnis is only with tzemer and pishtim, mixing these two types together, that's if you're going to wear the garment. Avu bahala. If you're not wearing the garment, you're just covering yourself with it, like with a blanket or whatever. You're covering yourself, but you're not wearing it as a garment. Then maybe kol tre mini aser. Mixing any other two types of fibers together would be yasser, not only when it comes to tzemer and pishtim. And therefore, you have to have a special limud from the goyim that shatnas never applies to any other garments besides tzemer and pishtim. To include even in a case where you're not wearing it, you're only covering yourself with it. Wait a minute, this makes no sense. Is this not a kavachaymer? If when it comes to a person that's wearing a garment that's shotness, where his entire body is having the benefit of this, so his entire body is having the benefit of this klayim, omrit, the Titus says clearly, in, that only tzemer and pishtim is what the isra of shotness is. But nothing else is included in Shatnez, as the Torah clearly says, Lo Silbash, that when you wear it, it has to be Tzemer and Pishtim. Halal, the If you're just covering yourself with it and you're not having the same amount of Hanah, you're having much less Hanah, for sure that we shouldn't be more stringent in this case and think that it comes to include more. You don't need a special Pasuk to teach me that it's only Tzemer and Pishtim. Ella, the Gemara concludes, that Rav Pape Bedusihi. This answer of Rav Pape, it cannot be true. Bedusi or in other places there's great as Berusihi, it's 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 this that tenets can't be accepted. Now, there are actually in Taisvis here and in other Mefarshim, there's all kinds of kashas that Lukhaira, there are ways how to be Miyashiv, how to answer of Papa's answer. And there's Gan simple pulim of why the Gemara doesn't accept it. It's not so pashit. If Rav Papa gave this answer, or at least it was thought that he said this answer, and the Gemara quotes it, there has to be a Pisa Mokim for this answer. Let's go weiter. The third answer. So the Gemara Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak Omar. Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak says Afkol. Again, going back to the first statement of Rabbi Shmuel, where Rabbi Shmuel says that all times when the Torah says Beged, including by Tumah, it only means Semer and Pishtim and not anything else, which is a contradiction to the second statement statement where he was marbe other type of garments as well. So he explains what is this afkal talking about and now we're going to enter into a sugi of tzitzis for the most part here, till the Mishnah. <coughs> so he says, la suya tzitzis the first Rabbi Shmuel was talking about tzitzis, that the mitzvah of tzitzis is only on garments that are either tzemer or pishtim wool or linen. That's what he was talking about. He wasn't talking about tumah. By tumah, the din of tumah applies to all garments, not only tzemer and pishtim, as the second Rabbi Shmuel says. Frek the Gemara, similar question to what we had on the Rav Papa's Teretz. Tzitzis. He has to tell me that Tzitzis is only for Tzemer and Pishtim. Behad Yiksiv. You can see it clearly in the Torah. Because it says Le Silbash Shatnes Tzemer Pishtim. 
It says the Isr of Shatniz, and it's clearly only by Tzemer and Pishtim. And then right afterwards it says, Uksiv Gedilim Tasaloch, that you have to put on tzitzis. And there's a, there's a hekish between the two. We had this before already the, in, the, in the Gemara. The Gemara brought this already before, that there's a heter of wearing tzitzis, which is Shatniz, because of this hekish. So from this hekish we can also see that the mitzvah of tzitzis is only for Tzemer and Pishtim and not any other materials. So why do we need a special limud from the Goyim to say that all the Begadim and the Torah are only Tzemer and Pishtim to teach this to me by Tzitzis? And for the Gemara, no, what this Rabbi Shmuel is teaching me is as follows. So, I would have thought that I could understand the the Pshat in this Pasuk over here, where it says Tzemer and Pishtim by Tzitzis differently. Kedarava, I could touch it like Rava. The Rava Rami, because Rava asked the following contradiction. Ksiv ha konof. When it comes to the parasha of tzitzis, which we say every day, three times a day or four times a day, the Torah writes the word ha konof, which is an extra word. I already said before al kanfe vigdayim, and then it says again ha konof psil tchelis. That's an extra word. So what does it teach me? Min konof. That the tzitzis has to be the garment, the actual garment, and the actual strings of the tzitzis have to be the same min. If the tzitzis, if the garment is made out of wool, then the strings should be made out of wool. If the garment is made out of linen, so then the strings should be made out of linen. That's what it's saying. Min konof. But then, uksiv, in the other pasuk it says, the, the, the hekish that we just quoted, tzemer upishtim yachtov. That your tzitzis could be made just like the shatnis, tzemer and pishtim. Meaning it doesn't have to be the same min. The garment it could be from linen, the tzitzis can be from wool, or maybe the garment could be from silk, and the, and the garment uh, again, the, the garment could be from silk, and the strings can be from linen. They don't have to be the same mean at all. So how do we answer this contradiction? Okay, so, so Rav says, what's the answer? Semer upishtim. When it comes to tzitzis, which is made out of linen or flax, or uh, 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 again, wool or linen, or, or wool or flax. Poitrin so then, this will work, this will, the tzitzis will patter, bein b'minon, bein shaloi b'minon. Whether the tzitzis you place into the garment is the min of the actual garment, or it's not the min of the garment. When it comes to tzemer and pishtim, the Torah is giving you more options. If you're using the strings from tzemer and pishtim, it doesn't have to be the same min as the garment itself. Shah minin, but if you're using other minim, not tzemer and pishtim, like well, let's say you're using silk or any other minim, so then, Biminon poitrin, shaloi biminon ain't poitrin. Here, only if you're using the same min, then it patters. If it's not the same min, then it does not patter. So if you have a silk garment, you're gonna have to have silk tzitzis. It has to be the same min. This is the way Rove darshaned this, this drosh over here. So what do we see from here? According to Rove, even though the title clearly says by tzitzis, tzemer and pishtim, but he doesn't use that as a drasha to say that the mitzvah of tzitzis is only regarding tzemer and pishtim. The mitzvah of tzitzis applies even to other materials, silk or any other materials. However, by tzemer and pishtim, you have more, more of an option. You can use it even shaloi b'minon. By silk, you don't have that option. But the, the actual chiv and mitzvah of tzitzis applies even to other garments besides tzemer and pishtim. So now the Gemara explains, this is what Rabbi Shmuel disagreed with. So, if I would just see the tzemer and pishtim that it says here by tzitzis, I would think to taich like Rav says, that still includes other minim in the mitzvah of tzitzis, kamash malan. So therefore the first Rabbi Shmuel comes to say that we learn from the Goyim that when it says in the Torah Beged, it refers only to tzemer and pishtim and there's no chiv of tzitzis whatsoever by a garment that's not Tzemer and Pishtim. That's what it comes to teach me. Halacha. Believe the halacha is that um, by other minim the, the chiv is only with Rabbanon. It's a good question. So I did not check it up so I don't want to say huh? I, uh, that's why we make to have only uh, to have wool tzitzis. Yeah. Okay, I didn't check it up right now. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so this is Rav Nachman by Yitzchak's Pshat to answer the stira of the first Rabbi Shmuel and the second Rabbi Shmuel. The first Rabbi Shmuel is talking about tzitzis and the second Rabbi Shmuel is talking about tuma, and he says that tuma refers to all materials, not only tzemer and pishtim. So, I am going to say, 
according to the tone of the Beit Abishmal. My shnal inyin tume de mar bishar begodim. So now, what is the difference? Why, when it comes, Gemara is asking this question on the pshat that Rav Nachman by Yitzchak just said. Why, when it comes to tume? Are we marbe other begodim from oy beged? And we say that the tuma applies to other materials as well. As well, the chsiv oy beged. Hachanami leim leraba is shar begodim. Over here by tzitzis as well. There's also a pasuk that we could be marbe other materials as well besides semer and pishtim. What's that pasuk? Me asher tachasaba. The Taita by tzitzis writes an extra pasuk asher tachasaba, a garment that you cover yourself with it, and that includes any garment, not only a beged. It says whatever you cover yourself with. So why don't we say this? And for the Gemara, Hahu la suye ksos suma hudasa. That extra pasuk of Asheta Chasaba is coming for a different thing. It's coming to say that even a person that's blind is also chayiv and sitsis when he covers himself with a garment. Why would I think he's not chayiv and sitsis? So the Gemara brings up Raise. Tani will learn to Nabraise, Ure Isem Oise. By tzitzis it says that you have to see the tzitzis. Prat luxus laila. This comes to exclude a ksus laila that's not chayiv and sitsis. So we see over here that there's an Indian to be able to see. So I would think that that would exclude a Suma, a person that's blind. So therefore we say no. Uriisa Moisa is coming to exclude a Ksus Laila. And it's not coming to exclude a Suma, a person that's blind. That we learn out from Ashat Hasaba that is Chayev and Sitsis. Now the Pshat and Ksus Laila is a big machlekes Rishainim. What exactly Ksus Laila means? The Rambam says Ksus Laila is a garment that's worn during the night, which means it doesn't have to necessarily be a garment that's designated for the night. It's a garment that's, that can be used any time, and a person does use it any time. But if you're now nighttime using it, sleeping with it, or using it, it's Pater and Sitzes. Other Rishainim, Rashi over here seems to be saying, and the Rosh and so on. So other Rishainim say Ksus Laila means specifically a garment that's designated for use at night. Pajamas or other uh, other garments that are specifically designated for being used at night. An interesting thing is this is also brought up in the to the fact that women are potter from potter from mit, uh, mitzvah of tzitzis. Why are women potter from tzitzis? Because it's a mitzvah sasei shas mangrama. Now according to the Rambam, it's very easy to understand why it's a mitzvah sasei shas mangrama. Because at night there's no chiv in tzitzis. No matter what kind of garment you wear, even if it's a garment that's not designated for at night, it's potter of tzitzis. According to Rashi and the Rosh, you chayiv and tzitzis at night as long as you're wearing a garment that's not, not, not designated for the night. If it's a garment that's designated for the day or even used day and night, it's chayiv and tzitzis. So there's no limitation in the time of the mitzvah. The limitation is in the cheftzah, that if it's a beggar that's designated for the night, it's potter. So why is it called a mitzvah seishas mangrama? So Taisis and Kedushin is mechadish because because the way we define which cheftze is chayiv and tzitzis is based on the use of day and night, that itself is enough to make it a mitzvah seishas mangrama. Although it's not a mitzvah that's limited in time, but because we choose only the cheftze that's used by day and not by night, that's enough to make it a mitzvah seishas mangrama. It's a big chiddush. One more interesting thing let me add to this. Benigaya to wearing tzitzis at night. So according to what it says over here in the opinion of Rashi and the Rosh, which I believe is the majority opinion of the Rishainim, that as long as it's a beggar that's designated for the night, it's potter and tzitzis. If it's a beggar that's not designated for the night, so then it's chayiv and tzitzis. So if you're wearing tzitzis at night, it, it's better to, if you change your tzitzis, to wear the tzitzis for a 24-hour period and then change it in the morning. Not to have a tzitzis designated for daytime and a tzitzis designated for nighttime. Because if it's designated for the night, so then it's really potter of tzitzis. But if you're using a beggar by night that's wearing day and night, so then you're wearing a beggar that's chayiv and tzitzis. So you're doing a mitzvah. That's an interesting practical thing that uh, comes from this union of Ksus Laila. Let's go further in the Gemara. So the Gemara is going to discuss now what we just said, that Ksus Suma is Chayv and Sitsis, <laughs> and Ksus Laila is Potter and Sitsis. So what's the difference? You're saying that a Ksus Laila, a garment for at night, is Potter of Tzitzis. So maybe from Uriisa Maisa, we should exclude that a Ksus of a Suma is Potter of Tzitzis. How do we know? Because he can't see. The Summa can't see. How do we know to say that it's not coming to exclude night tzitzis? And for the Gemara, Keshu Oimer, Asher Techase Ba, Harekzus Summa Omer. But, but the Tere says Asher Techase Ba, which is coming to add something. So this is adding even a Summa, even a person that's blind is Chayiv in tzitzis. 
So what do I learn out from Riesa Moisai? Prat Lixos Laila. This comes to exclude only Lixos Laila and not Lixos of Asuma. So the Gemara immediately asks, Umara Isa, the Rabbi Sosuma, Olohaitzi Lixos Laila. Why are you darshaning this way? That the Lixos of Asuma of a blind man is going to be Chayev and Lixos, a garment designated or used at night, is going to be Potter. And for it to marba suma, I'm going to be marba the ksos of a blind person, sheyeshna b'riye eitz lachedim. Others at least can see this garment. So when you're being marba this ksos, you're not completely being oiker what the Torah says, or isa it's, it's still or isa somebody could see it. And on the other hand, the lohaitzi ksos, um, and I exclude exos by night time at night when it's dark nobody could see this exos not you not anybody else so therefore we're going to be mamayat that because the Torah says it's in a time that you can see it <coughs> Okay, so therefore the Gemara now settles why Ksusuma were, ma- were, were Marbe and Ksuslaila were Maitzi. But the Gemara has one more question on this. The Eime, maybe we should say that when the Taita writes Ashet Chasaba, Le Rabba is Shar Now the Gemara goes back to what we said before. We said that Rabbi Shmal taught us that when it comes to the Mitzvah of Tzitzis, the Mitzvah of Tzitzis only applies to Tzemer and Pishtim and not any other materials. So the Gemara goes back to that and says, who says maybe this Ashet Chasaba is coming to be Marbe? All the begotten and not Semer and Pishtim, not only Semer and Pishtim. And for the Gemara, no, Mestavre, it makes logical sense. Koi bitsemer u Pishtim, if the Pasik there is talking about Semer and Pishtim. By Tzitzis it says the Hekish clearly that it's Semer and Pishtim, Marbe Semer u Pishtim. So if it writes an extra word to be Marbe something, we're going to be Marbe something within that context of Semer and Pishtim. Koi bitsemer u Pishtim, the parish is talking about Semer u Pishtim, Marbe Shar Begodim, you're going to jump to be Marbe different Begodim that are not mentioned in the parish at all. So therefore, the Gemara says, it's more mistaver to be marbe ksos of a suma benigayet etzemer and pishtim and not to be marbe different garments that are not mentioned in the Pasuk here altogether. Okay, that ends this sugya regarding Rabbi Shmal, the stira that there was in Rabbi Shmal. Now the Gemara goes back to a detail in what Rabbi Shimon ben Alaza said. Going back to Rabbi Shimon ben Alaza's statement on Daf Chavav Amir Aleph. So Rabbi Shimon ben Alaza says that all garments are not makabel tuma uh, when it's three by three it's boys. And then there was another detail that Rabbi Shimon ben Alaza said there and the Gemara now is going to analyze this and, and focus on this part. You could use it for schach because it's not Mekabal Tumah. But then he said, besides Pishton. That's what the Gemara is going to focus on now. Chutz mi Pishton. Besides flax. Now the Gemara is Medayik, as Rashi explains, he said Pishton. That you can use Pishton for Schach. It's not Mekabal Tumah. He doesn't say a Beget Pishton. He doesn't talk about, uh, he doesn't use the Lushan of Beget Pishton. He uses the Lushan of Pishton. Okay, which means that even if it's not a Beget, it wasn't. It wasn't yet uh, spun. Or it's just a a, a, a piece of a flax, and it wasn't yet wo- woven. So still, what is he saying? When it comes to pishton, it's makabel tuma, and you can't use it for schach. Okay? If you would have said beged pishton, that would have meant only when it's prepared as a beged, then it's makabel tuma, and you can't use it as schach. Because he said chutz mi pishton, that means even before it's fully processed, it's makabel tuma, and you can't use it for schach. That's what the Gemara is going to fo- focus on now. Omer Abaye, Abaye said, Rab Shimon ben Elazar and Sumchis Omru Davar Echad. Rab Shimon ben Elazar and Sumchis both say the same thing. Rab Shimon ben Elazar Hada Mara. Rab Shimon ben Elazar, we're talking about what, the statement that was mentioned before, again, which refers to Pishton, that Pishton cannot be used for Schach. Even before it's a Beget Pishton, even before it's spun, even before it's woven, it's not yet a garment. It's already Mekabal Tome and it can't be used for Schach. That's what the Gemara is focusing on now. So that's Abshim ibn Alasa. Now, Sumchis, where did Sumchis say the same thing? The Tanya Sumchis says, Sichicha betvi, if a person puts Schach of 
a piece of flax that was spun, but it wasn't yet completed. The, the process wasn't yet finished, it wasn't yet woven as a garment. Psula, it's possible, it's already possible even before it's, it's processed as a garment. So here we see he holds the same thing like Rabshim bin Alaza that Pishton is Makabal Tome even before it becomes a Beget. Mitnei Shemetame bin Negoyim. Because by Negoyim we find that it becomes Tome, as we already learned before, that even a Shesi and a Erev becomes Tome by Negoyim. So therefore this Pishton becomes Tome even even before it becomes a garment. Keman, now according to who is this? There are two Pshatim and Rashi here. Uh, let's go first with the first Pshat and Rashi. Rashi says that Keman means Sumchis' opinion. Where, where else do we find uh, an opinion like Sumchis? Kihai Tana. We find like the following Tana. The Tnan we learned in the Mishnah, Shasi ve Erev metame bin Egoim. The Shasi and the Erev, those are the two threads that are used to weave a garment. They become Tommy by Egoim, Miyad, immediately. Right, immediately meaning right after it's spun into, into threads, even before it's actually woven into a garment. So here I see, like Rabbi, like, like Sumchis just said, Sichacha betvi. Psula, right after it's spun into a thread, it's already it can't be used for uh, for schach. And Abner is saying the exact same thing. That's the first pshat in Rashi that Keman is bringing a, a raya for Sumchis's opinion that Rab Meir holds like Sumchis. The second pshat in Rashi is that Keman goes on Abaya. What's a source for what Abaya said? Abaya said that when you have Pishton, even if it's not spun yet, even if it's just the raw material of the flax, it still is makabal tome and you can't use it for the sukkah. And the Gemara now is bringing a raya for Abaya, and the raya is going to be from what Rabbi Yehuda said. But Rabbi Yehuda, the second opinion in that mission is Rabbi Yehuda says, Hashasi, the shasi, which is the, the, the um, thread that goes in the length, Mishayashle, when it's taken out of the pot, where it's cooked in a pot, it's boiled in a pot in order to whiten the material, as soon as it's taken out of the pot, even before it's spun, it's already Mechabal Tumah and it can't be used, and it becomes Tommy by Negoim. The Ha'edev, the other thread that goes in the width, Miyad, immediately after it's spun. And so there's a difference between the two garment, between the two threads. The, the Mepharshim explained that the garment that's in the length is more apparent in the garment, and therefore there's more of a chumra regarding it. That's uh, the, what I saw said. The ha'unin shall pishton, and then when it comes to unin shall pishton, which is the the bunch, the bundle of of the of the uh, flax, even before there's any process whatsoever, mishi yislabnu. Once it was whitened in the, they put it in the oven and they, they, they to make it white. Even before it was spun, even before anything, it's makabel toma for negayim. So according to the second shot of Rashi, this last detail here of unin shall pishton. This is the source of what Abaya said when Abaya was medayik in Rabshim ben Alaz's words. Rabshim ben Alaz also says Pishton. Pishton can't be used for schach because it's already Mechabal Tome. The source to interpret and be medayik in the words of Rab Shem ben Alaza that way is because Rab Meir also, Rab Yehuda that is, also says Unin Shal Pishton. That we have a bundle of flax as soon as it comes out of the oven, even before it was, it was spun or woven, it right away becomes Tome and therefore can't be used for the sukkah. This is the source of Abai's opinion. This is the end of the Gemara for today. Have a good day everybody, at Tzlacha and everything, and we should only hear good news.